Good morning, Servant House family and friends. I am Cal, and this is my young bride, Dee. And we are here to share with you this morning some encourage, encouraging words from our devotional, and the title of which is In the Face of Fear. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for just another day, Father. We thank you for your son, Jesus, through whom we have eternal life. We thank you for this opportunity to share with, with the listening and watching uh, body some encouraging words. And we ask that some eyes will be opened and some hearts will be comforted by what we say and do today. We ask you in your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, once again, the, the title for t uh, today's devotion is in the face of fear. The uh, scripture comes from, uh, the background scripture comes from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. And the key scripture is Matthew 14, 27. And uh, it reads, Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I, don't be afraid. Uh, so uh, Joe, the background scripture is Joe is, is, is uh, relating how when he was young and the uh, bedroom lights went out, you know, he, he really got uh, scared. And so and then also, as he got older, I guess it turned into having insomnia. And so uh, when you get scared and you're fearful, uh, the one thing you learn is that fear is not your friend. You know, just like Jesus said, he had, he's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power in Psalm 9. <clears throat> because you get gripped, it's almost like you can't move. It just kind of uh, totally disables you. And so uh, in, the, in the back, in the scripture, with, this is, you know, the disciples were kind of facing a storm and, and um, you know, possibly their boat might be overturned. And so, you know, Jesus walking on the water and it is I, you know, you know, don't be afraid. And so... A lot of times when we're, when we're studying these scriptures, you know, it's, it's a, another thing we have to meditate on that and really uh, the application is, is a process. And so uh, the time for me when I was really afraid and scared is when you had to have the quadruple bypass surgery. So fortunately, our son, and we were, we were in Oklahoma at this particular time. And so fortunately, Craig was home from California. And kind of in the middle of the night, you know, we, and it was this early Monday morning because we had had a big day at church, remember? And so uh, you told Craig, you, you, know, you, you know, you didn't feel well. You know, and I'm thinking you had indigestion because you probably ate. That's what it felt like. And so I said, I said, okay, and so Craig took you to digging this. And um, I said, okay, let me go to school. I, I need to change my lesson plans because it went off what I had on there. I didn't, I didn't want to sub to have to do that. So I did that. And, you know, that's, you know, maybe an hour I was gone tops. And so I walk in and the doctor meets me and she says, um, we had to relieve one of your arteries because she said, they're all blocked. They're all, you know, no good, basically. And one, see, the one we had to take care of right away. I've already called the doctor for surgery tomorrow. I'll never forget, I, I couldn't move. And, and, and even to this day, it's, it, it's still very foggy to me. And uh, I, 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 I'm thinking I had to call Craig to come back to the, to the hospital. And, uh, and yeah, I think he called Miss Lonnie to call the people at the church. I, I, you know, it's, it's all very foggy to me right now. But I remember being so fearful because I'm trying to figure out how did indigestion turn out to be a heart problem? Because, you know, he's, you know, he's thin, he doesn't smoke, he doesn't drink, he exercises. And I'm thinking, you know, indigestion, didn't he have indigestion? <laughs> and so, um, so sometimes these scriptures that, you know, you've been memorizing and studying, when you get into a situation like that, sometimes I'm grateful we had friends around to remind me, you know, don't be afraid. You know, uh, you know, Jesus, he's with you. You know, all these things that our friends were 
reminding me of, because I, I was like, this is not happening. And so um, um, it's, it's, like I said, it's, it's, it's another thing, and it's, it's a process to um, make those scriptures real mm-hmm. when, mm-hmm. when you're in the midst of the storm. Mm-hmm. And so if, you know, it was there, but I needed some friends to come along to say, hold my hand and say, you know, because you look, it's like, you know, then I'm looking at them thinking, you're, you're looking really bad by the end. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, you know, you're kind of a miracle. You are I, a miracle. I am a miracle. <laughs> I am a miracle. Because um, I, I, I was going through some things too, but as I learned later, I didn't go through as much as you were going through. Uh, because when they pulled me in, it did feel like indigestion, um, but they began the process of preparing me for the surgery. And so I looked around, and, and the people around me, uh, they looked like competent people. They looked like they knew what they were doing. <laughs> so I was comforted by their, by their behavior. But pretty soon after that, um, I mean, there was no pain. I had no pain in my chest. And the only reason they determined I had a heart issue was through the um, enzymes that they that they uh, that they that they saw in the lab, and that indicated that I had a what they called a um, they called it a um, acute acute heart attack, which means I didn't feel anything. But yeah, but you, I I saw she, your arteries, and they were clunk, they were. They, Even to my untrained eye. I had four arteries that were blocked, and I had two that were 50% blocked. I had one that was 70% blocked, and one that was 90% blocked. So and that was the big one. And I asked the doctor, I said, well, how many are you going to do? How many of these uh, arteries are you going to do? He said, he said, I can see three, and if I can get to that last one, it's going to be four. So it was pretty serious. But soon after, after all the flurry of the storm, uh, I was relieved of the of the effects of the storm because uh, the doctor asked me to begin counting backwards from ten. <laughs> and when he when he did that, I think I got to nine, and uh, so I was I was gone. And so it was a success. Uh, I'm well. I have um, uh, new arteries that that were grafted in from other parts of my body, and so I'm a miracle. But these storms are common in our lives. And the one we're going through now that, that uh, is swirling around us every day is the one that, that, that starts off with the COVID. You have the political, you have the economic, you have the racism, you have the police, you have the unemployment. You have all these words that, that hit us every day. And it's a storm. And it's the type of storm that it, it never stops. And so what we as Christians, as encouragers, what we should be doing is reminding people that in every storm, there's a blessing. And I think someone wrote a song about that too. There's a blessing in the storm. And so we, we have to trust the promises that God gave us, trust and obey his word, and claim those promises. Because we have to know that he will, as Another songwriter wrote, he will show up. And so we can start thanking him now because we know he's going to show up. And it will be on time. Amen. Amen. So, um, and our scripture of encouragement is a, a very familiar one, Isaiah 41.10. And it means, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. And so, uh, to and it's like I said, it's good to have friends to come and and live and uh, encourage you mm-hmm. in the storm because sometimes you need that because you can, sometimes the fear you have to you have to have friends to help you to rebuke that because it it does uh, stop you in your tracks. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you uh, once again that uh, we know that when we uh, put our trust in you, 
that uh, we know that you can handle all the storms and that you still can say, peace be still to the storms, God. And so we ask that you strengthen us, that you uh, remind us, oh God, that you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And you're still saying to us today, through all the, the crises that we're going through right now, that you're still saying to us, it is I. Mm -hmm. Do not be afraid. So we thank and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless and have a great day. Amen.